Here's one more example of standard strategy problems. As a reminder, these are the four steps to the standard strategy. First, you draw the free body diagram, and you define the coordinate axis along the direction of acceleration, and you use those axes to break forces into components, and all these steps will have resulted in a diagram that will allow you to write down Newton's second law equations. All right, let's uh, look at the question. It says a uh, mass of fuzzy dice is attached to rear view mirror by a short string. The car accelerates at a constant rate and the dice hangs at some small angle from the particle because of the car's acceleration. What is the magnitude of the acceleration of the car? All right, um, looks like I should draw a diagram once again to help me think through this question. So let me start by drawing the car. This is the rear view mirror that the dice will be hanging from. And it says dice hangs at some angle. And all this is happening while the car is accelerating forward. All right, I want you to pause for a bit and make sure that this picture makes sense. Imagine you are driving, you are accelerating as you are, I guess, starting from rest or whatever. Uh, imagine something is hanging in your car. Do you expect it to hang back the way I've drawn it here? Or do you expect it to hang forward? Make sure you think that through, it is important. So once you have convinced yourself that whatever is hanging in the car will hang backward as the car accelerates forward, then great. Then this is the correct picture to start with. And we are now ready to start following the standard strategy steps. So we have to draw the free body diagram. And it's clear what object we are drawing free body diagram of, the dice that's hanging from the string. So let's draw that. This dot represents the dice, and it's hanging from the string. So there's a tension acting on that dice along the direction of the string. Oh, that means this is the angle theta. And as drawn here, the diagram is incomplete because it would have the dice accelerating upward diagonally this way. And that doesn't look right. So hopefully after staring at it for a while, I hope you realize there must be gravity. So gravity is pulling it down with the force of mg. Hmm, but the way gravity is drawn, there's no way the dice can stay in the same position. The, there's going to be a net force. So this is the question you have to resolve. Is the dice accelerating? This is why I like this question. It forces you to rethink how you might have been thinking about questions like this. From your perspective, in the car, it's easy for you to look at the dice and think of it as being at rest, not accelerating. But as you think through this situation, what you have to realize is that everything in this picture is accelerating with the same acceleration as the car. So the dice is accelerating. It is accelerating to the right with the acceleration A. So this free body diagram is exactly what we expect to see. In the vertical direction, the forces will balance out. But in the horizontal direction, there will be a net force to the right. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the next step, define axis. We figured out the direction of acceleration, so the axis should be along the direction of acceleration. Let's uh, make this the x-axis, and this will be the y-axis. All right, that looks good so far. Now it's time to break forces into components. The gravity is already along the y-axis, so we need to break down tension into x, and y components. So we already have the angle labeled as theta. So the x component 
is opposite to that angle so it should be t sine theta so this is the situation I've been warning about that even though it's the x component of the force it is associated with the sine theta get into the habit of always drawing the triangle then you will always get it right okay so the y component is t cosine theta since it's adjacent to the angle all right so we're done with step number three now we are ready to write down newton's second law equations net force is equal to mass times acceleration and a reminder this stands for actually two equations net force along the x direction is equal to mass times x component of acceleration and the net force along the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration along the y direction and here because of how we did the step number two the y component of acceleration is zero by design and that will make some of our equations simpler okay so let's go ahead and write them down let's do the x direction first so the net force along the x direction are huh I have only one force the x component of tension so t co not cos sine <laughs> theta is equal to mass times acceleration and this is the whole acceleration since the entire acceleration is along the x direction and if you are thinking of previous questions where we only needed the information from one component you might be tempted to skip out on the y component but I hope you look at the equation and realize that you have two unknowns so this will be an example of a situation where you do need both components even though the y component cancels out to zero apparently there's some information that we need to get from that so the y component of the forces that force in the y direction is equal to uh, I have two forces the y component of the tension force t cosine theta um, that's upward call that positive minus mg gravity is equal to zero so this is the end of the standard strategy it's a good point to stop count the number of equations and count the number of unknowns and make sure that this is solvable so the second equation didn't introduce any new unknowns it just gave me tension again so so this is why we need a second equation in order to be able to solve for tension and then plug it into equation one so let's do that from equation two I'm solving for tension and we get tension is equal to mg divided by cosine theta all right we are using the substitution technique so let's call this equation three and we are going to plug this into equation one and this yields mg over cosine theta times sine theta is equal to ma oh mass cancels out so I guess we didn't need to know the mass of the dice which is good because I was a little bit unsure how this mass applied to the pair of dice it's a uh, mass of individual die or but well it doesn't matter <laughs> so we can simplify sine theta over cosine theta as tangent theta and with that little bit of simplification we get acceleration is equal to g tangent theta or plug in the numbers let me use g is equal to 9.8 I get 0 0.44 meters per second squared 0 0.44 all right that's it so this is a challenging question especially the first time you see it because there are several steps which break you out of what might be called the normal way of thinking 
But once you are trained in how to apply the standard strategy, this question is actually a lot simpler than the other questions you have seen. There are fewer forces and math isn't that hard. The difficult part is the initial setup and thinking through all the steps and most importantly, avoiding all the pitfalls that could befall you <laughs> if you don't carefully think it through. So that's all. Until next time. Bye.